Um, my name is Katrina. I'm the Asian Pacific Resource Center Librarian for LA County Library. And thank you so much for joining us for today's event, Samoan Tatao in Japanese Irizumi, a discussion on tattoo culture with Sulape C. Liu Fao and Taki Kitamura. Um, Today's event is part of LA County Library's Stories on Skin program series. You can learn more about this project and watch recordings of our previous programs by visiting the website. The link will be in the chat. On that page, you'll also find info on how to share your tattoo stories with us in a community tattoo photo exhibit. So please share your photos and stories with us. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Finally, I'd like to shout out our friends at California Humanities. This project was made possible with support from California Humanities, which is a nonprofit partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Visit www.calhum.org. Their link will also be in the chat. All right, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over and introduce um, our two very special guests for today. Again, we're joined by C. Leofau and Taki Kitamura. And yeah, I'm just going to let you guys uh, introduce yourselves. And for the audience, just to let you know, um, C is joining us from Orange County, correct? Yes. Cool. And Taki is joining us from San Jose. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. I'm going to turn the floor over to you guys. And if you could just tell us a little bit about yourselves. You want to go first? or? <laughs> it's before beauty, my friend. <laughs> All right. Well, first off, uh, Katrina, Kasha, and uh, everyone at the LA County Library and everyone that's tuned in, um, thank you so much for having us. Um, I can say this, uh, I've been tattooing since 1998. Uh, my background is traditional Japanese tattooing. Um, something that we'll get into a little bit later is that that sort of tattooing is not really um, looked upon well in Japan. In fact, it's um, a lot more popularized and uh, mainstream outside of Japan. And so I think for me, um, you know, it's like having this type of thing within a library setting, within a museum setting is very important. I think a lot of us on our side of the equation, um, you know, and, and see situations a little different because in Samoa, the, like, you know, everyone from the prime minister, the head of state loves Satao. So, you know, they've got a bit of a different cultural background that we'll get into. But yeah, for me, it's like, I think it's really special to be able to talk here today. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having a great discussion. I've been tattooing for 23 years, and I think I've always considered myself to be an advocate for tattoo culture. Um, in my case, very specifically Japanese uh, tattooing. But I think um, as we discuss today, we'll sort of see like a lot of those bridges and um, you know like kind of similarities. And I think one of the things we really wanted to get in today is like talk about how Japanese tattooing has spread all over the world. Samoan tattooing has spread all over the world, and I think both C and I are like. You know, we're younger artists that are also trying to do traditional things. Um, ironically, we had all this technical issue with, you know, uh, WebEx technology, but we both also do tattoos by hand, the old school way. So I think that's, you know, there, there's some funny parallels running here. Um, but um, I feel like I'm rambling here. So I'm going to let, uh, let's uh, introduce C.E. Liu Fao. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, Kasha, Katrina, thank you very much for having me on. Taki, thank you for inviting me to this wonderful event. Uh, my name is Sulwapi C. Liu Fao. Uh, I've been tattooing. I started tattooing in 2002, 2003, around there. Um, I'm the, I've owned A Town Tattoo for about 13, 14 years now. I'm a machine artist as well as a, a Samoan Tatao practitioner. I've received my title from the Sulwapi family of Samoa in 2015. Uh, I've, you know, I have about uh, six years under my belt as uh, an official to Funga, but I've been working, I've worked with a family for about eight years prior to that, uh, you know, just uh, being involved with uh, the traditional art form. Uh, and um, yeah, so here we are today. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it was interesting to be invited out to this, this event. And, uh, you know, with someone tattooing, like Taki said, doing tattoos traditionally, uh, you know, in the Samoan culture, there's a lot of prestige uh, that goes along with the tattoo. So it's an honor to be able to perform this and have people and this feel the same way about it as people in Samoa. So thank you for having me. No, it's excellent. We're so excited um, to have you guys here and uh, that you were um, so willing to share all your knowledge and expertise with our audience. <laughs> So for the lay person, can you explain a little bit about um, tatao as well as um, traditional Japanese tattooing and what makes it so distinctive from other forms of tattooing? Um, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so tatao is 
the traditional Polynesian form of tattooing, uh, the ink is applied with two sticks. One of the sticks carries uh, either a, a comb or rope needles that is struck with the other stick and it puts the ink in. So this is uh, a cultural practice for Samoans. It's been a form of identity as well, uh, as well as it's carried a lot of the philosophy as, uh, of us as as Polynesians, it describes our our settling of the uh, of the islands of all the islands, and the, the philosophies that have kept the culture alive. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of um. I mean, and it's it's interesting as we talk today. I think we'll talk about the, the there's so many like differences and similarities. And I think um as I said earlier, like one of the I think a large crucial difference is that. You know, in Japan, it's like the mainstream society and the government looks down upon the tattoos, whereas in Samoa, it's actually a revered practice, um, something that's honored. Uh, the t you know, the tattoo masters are honored. They're not persecuted. Um, but one another thing that they do have in common is coded communication. Um, I think both cultures have this ability to tell stories with imagery. Um, some of the Japanese stuff is a little more like pictorial, but at the same time, there is a lot of hidden meaning and whatnot. So I think when you look at both types of tattooing, you see like these sort of like interesting like backstories and whatnot happening. Um, just to give like a, a kind of a quick crash course in Japanese tattoo history, um, like pretty much everywhere else in the world, um, tattooing has existed in Japan for a really long time. Um, if you go back to like 10,000 BC, you'll have like clay figurines from the Jomon period that have markings that look like tattoos. Uh, the very first Chinese accounts of Japanese people were that they had face and hand tattoos. Um, according to their rank. And I think this is back to when it was more of a hunter-gatherer society. Um, what we consider to be the Japanese tattoo now is a product of the Edo period. So it's post-1603. Um, a lot of it was developed in the 1700s, 1800s. Um, and, you know, the, one of the, the differences in application, I think, between us and the Samoans is that, um, you know, Japan had iron ore. So they could make metal. They could make, you know, like um, swords, needles and whatnot. So they used needles from the start, whereas the Samoans would use sharpened board husks. And I think you'll find that all over the world that people use whatever implement they could to, to make a tattoo. And, um, you know, I think it's really cool because, like, if you look at now, like, you know, like the way CE operates and it's the same as somebody would have in Samoa a thousand years ago, except for instead of the board husks, they're using a stainless steel implement. So it's really just changed for hygiene reasons. But, you know, he's part of like, um, you know, I think in Japan, there's a bit of a stigma with tattooing because at what point the Japanese government used tattoos to mark criminals. And then there's also like a lot of theory that certain tattoos are designed to cover the criminal marks. So I think in a lot of ways, that was always like kind of like the, the first, the beginning of the downfall, I guess, to the way Japanese people would look towards tattoos. But um, I think like, you know, see, uh, he'll be modest, but he's joined part of like a 2000 year tradition over there. Like Samoans have been tattooing. And um, and I think it's kind of cool because both C and I, like we started out as machine tattooers. And maybe we can talk about that, C, going from, because I think we both had that desire to go back to the old way and, and do, I mean, we do both, but you know, like what was your main motivation for that? Um, I think, you know, a lot of my, my motivation, kind of the, um, the diaspora of the Samoan community as we kind of gone out across the world, uh, we've lost touch with the original culture. And so one of my first motivations in getting into the town just was just trying to understand the knowledge and understand how our being Polynesian people, we how we wore these designs and what they what they actually meant to us. So um, you know, and, and in doing that, I, I was able to learn so much about. Samoan culture. I was, you know, actually able to learn the Samoan language, which I, I'm not fluent in, but I, I'm passing it. I, you know, my my language and my my cultural knowledge has grown a lot. And uh, you know, one of the things about the Samoan tattoo is it was originally performed on people in their younger years. They would they would get it in their teens to early twenties, and it was a rite of passage for men and women. And uh, now it's more, it still is a rite of passage, but it's, it's been more of a, a reconnection of cultural identity and, and, and to be able to really stay connected to cultural philosophies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think, and I think definitely for me, like um, I was just for general knowledge, I was born in Japan. 
Um, my family immigrated here when I was three years old. Um, I was kind of going back and forth. My mother taught me Japanese. But, you know, I think in a lot of ways, I identify as a Japanese American. So from a young age, I really felt that having like a Japanese tattoo, like A, I thought it was really cool, but I felt it was like some sort of a connection to some heritage that I felt like maybe I wasn't quite in tune with or that I was missing out on. And um, I think I really feel that like, you see a lot of, um, like I said, Japanese tattooing, Polynesian tattooing, contemporary Polynesian tattooing is all over the world. And people have different motivations. I think um, on one hand, we see a lot of people of all ethnic groups that identify with like the samurai spirit or Bushido spirit, or they want to get these images or they like the look of it. What I've noticed um, in, you know, and, and my, I put myself in this group too. I think there's a lot of Japanese Americans that are looking to get like a Japanese tattoo or their family crest as a way of kind of like affirming their heritage. I'm also seeing a lot of Asian Americans, they're, they're seeing that, you know, and I'm in no way saying it should be limited to that, but I'm just saying that like, I think for some people, it can be like, you know, like kind of a way to reconnect with your roots. And I, I'm sure like, you know, obviously I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, CE. Like, Oh, definitely 100%. Um, you know, just, you, you know, and, and this goes for all Polynesians and, and anybody with even a little bit of Polynesian or just been touched in their, in their life by being, you know, having grown up with Polynesians and, um, it's beautiful to be able to share the artwork and and the stories, um, you know, with the, you know on the tattoos that we make. So, uh, you know, and and I think that is one of the most important things is, is that I, I've said, you know, the philosophy and the philosophy is a commitment to family. It's a commitment to your community. It's uh, you know our you know our our connection with our higher our higher power, whatever God it is, you know, and and that's really it's it, it's being able to be grounded and, uh, you know, one of the things that goes along with Samoan tattoo is uh, we have a saying, Ole ala le pule o le tautua, and is that the path to leadership is through service. And in in us performing traditional tatau, one of the things that goes along with that is we kind of expect of our, our, our clients is for them to do the service to make sure that they're taking care of us well, we're we're performing this service for them, so it's uh yeah definitely the reconnection of uh of cultures and then also with you know the matter of non Polynesians, which has been absolutely wonderful, you know the attitude in Samoa has been very open towards sharing of the culture and any any time people have gone to Samoa they. They they want to take something home with them. They take a tattoo, you know, and and so over here in the in the United States, it's wonderful to be able to, um, you know, give that to people that have been touched by the community by the community, or even if it's if, if it's from, you know, through the internet, you know, not not having a physical um, encounter with a with the community, but you know, seeing it and learning about it, and uh, you know, that's that's one of the things that we get from a lot of people is that. They want to apply this this sense of family and their commitment to family and, and their loved ones and and they they feel that this is which it is represented strongly by Polynesian tattooing. So, yeah, I think for for me too, like I, I find it really fascinating how like you know there's like because because like I think in like Japan a lot of like and probably one of the things that hurt the image of Japanese tattooing to their media was probably like the association with the Yakuza and Yakuza film. And I'm not here to make a value judgment on what someone does for a living. And the truth is there was, there was a certain era, you know, where a lot of Yakuza were getting tattooed, but there was also an era in Japan where a lot of firefighters got tattooed, where a lot of laborers got tattooed. So I think sometimes these stereotypes can like sway public opinion, but I think like the, the idea that in like Samoa, um, and this is something that like C and I have worked together on, like we, you know, we were part of a museum exhibition in, uh, that originated at the Japanese American National Museum in LA, but it put forth the idea that, you know, Samoan tattooing actually helped preserve Samoan culture through colonization, through different government upheaval. And I think that's something where, you know, I think I know C and a lot of his colleagues take great pride in, in administering this for their people. And, um, I remember seeing like a really interesting, um, you know, like when we talk about the differences, like I feel like Japanese tattooing was always like one on one, largely because it was illegal. It was kind of had to be done in the shadows, whereas the Samoan tattoo is like a, more of a festive experience. The whole family shows up, you know, like they're they're out there. There's you know, they're, and one of the things I read was that, um, you know, some of the like people that were 
uh, criticism, criticizing the S Samoan tattoo, they're more upset about the celebration afterwards than the actual tattoo itself. So they didn't want these people that they were trying to conquer to have like this sense of identity and sense of pride. And I feel like that's something um, very special that C's offering. And especially with his hand tools, like I was going to say, see, because I know, I feel like, in the, especially in this day and age, there's a lot of talk about like, you know, like culture and, and um, indigenous practices. And we all know that like a lot of, you know, pretty much every culture at one point had tattooing of one sort or another. It was usually driven out by religion or colonization or whatever. So I think in that sense, like, in some ways, the Samoans retained their tools. So maybe you could talk a bit about, like, you're using these tools to not only tattoo traditional Samoan designs, but I know that I, you know, I, I like, I know some of these stories, but maybe you could tell other people about, like, some of these times when you've used these tools with um, in aiding other people sort of find their cultures or represent their cultures. Yeah, um, you know, definitely so... Uh, just uh, one of the questions I, I got on the side was, you know, so in the, the matter of uh, getting a traditional Samoan to tell, uh, you know, it's, the old way was that your your parents or your family would ask and petition the, the tattooist. Um, and, and now it is, you know, it's kind of more of a self-endeavor, you know, just go out and uh, you just got to get ready for the pain, you know, Run guys through five, six, eight programs. Um, but the matter of, of tattooing with the with the tools, especially when it comes to uh, indigenous cultures. And I think we're in a day and age right now where we want to reconnect. You know, I've, I think we've gotten so disconnected as a people from um, being in touch. And, uh, you know, it's, we don't go hunt, we go grocery shopping. You know, you don't, you know, we're not going to picnics. We're going out to, you know, out to dinners and, um, so the tools, they're not, it's not easy to take, you know, they, and uh, one of the things that I, I think a lot of cultures really enjoy being able to have this uh, hand application, like Taki said, we're tattooing the same way we would have tattooed hundreds of years ago. There's been very, very little change. I, the biggest change is the lights. And, and like Taki said, you know, in the, in, in changing the, you know, the needles, um, but yeah, and, and going through a traditional uh, style tattoo, there's it's, it's it's there's a lot more commitment. You know, there's you you don't you don't sit down. There's no there's not very much pre drawing. You, there's a lot of faith involved in in the outcome of this tattoo. But there, there really, really is something magical about just these hand applications, whether it's uh, Tatao or Tabori or Patok or you know any, any uh, form of application. It's you know there's something that really connects us to, um, you know, connects our souls to what we're doing when we do these hand applications. You know, we don't, we're not relying on a, on a battery or some electricity and, um, you know, and it has, it has become something that with a lot of cultures trying to get in touch with their indigenous markings, it's one thing to do it with the machine, but when we do it with the tools, it kind of proves that that was our mark, you know, that, you know, before we had these machines that we could just mark anything, if we can do it with the tools, like we have those marks, you know, and so it really is, uh, I think it kind of, it, it cements being able to reconnect with our, our, our indigenous roots. And, you know, one of the things with, with you talking, I know for me, you know, with the machine, we tattoo people and it's so easy to just, you know, take a break or stop right here for today. Um, you know, with these tools, it ain't like that. You know, we got a plan. We're 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 getting so much done. And I know with uh, Tabori, you know, with Tatao, you, you know, they they're hurting. And I think the pain level is is and the endurance through the pain is something that you know I admire for my clients going through this. You know, and 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 with the machine, it's you know, it's 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 a bit of a different story. People use a lot of numbing creams right now, but with the tools. You know, it's it's there's a lot of bravery and trust and everything that goes into this. And even with the Tabori, um, you know, like you know, how is it when people are hurting more? And it's just you know, you you know, it's a, that's a different you know, it's a different jab. The machine is you know, kind of brush. It's really aggressive, but you know, we're doing doing this um, traditional. Uh, I, I really you know that that endurance of pain. So I you know, it's kind of one of my you know with. Uh, so, boy, how is that with your clients, you know, in these large scale pieces with them dealing with that pain, you know? You know, you know it's funny you say that because and, and we talk about like stuff like 
perseverance and like you know like um like earning your tattoo and whatnot there's a um, one of the words for tattoo in japan in the osaka area is gaman and gaman means like you just take it you know like um and that's actually a word for tattooing in a certain area era but i will say this from my experience like i've seen because i know tattooers that just don't offer a choice and this is something that i think is really beautiful about the samoan tradition is that like the contemporary stuff it's okay to use a machine i think that everyone agrees on yeah. that when it comes to the traditional malu and pea, like it has to be done by hand and like we don't really have that rule we don't really i don't feel like the japanese like hold our tools sacred like i feel like when i was taught things and given tools i i appreciate that on a personal level but there's a lot of japanese tattooers that will they'll sell their tools and you know like things like that so i think we don't value them quite as much and uh, unfortunately but um i can say this like you know I, I generally offer my clients a choice and granted i'm a lot slower by hand than i am by machine and i think when it comes to the not just the pain but also financially I think a lot of people will be like, well, let's, okay, that was fun, but let's go back to machine kind of thing. Um, but every so often I'll have a client that's like, no, I want to do this by hand um, yeah. and I want to experience it. And, you know, like I did one where, you know, cause I can certainly get like, there's certain types of tattooing where I think I'm a lot more proficient by machine, but there's certain things where that Tabori, like, I mean, I feel like that color just soaks in so much brighter um you know your designs are kind of simpler like I, I don't know like i think my favorite era of japanese tattooing is before everyone went to machine like if you look like even like the 70s and 80s a lot of the, the masters were all doing still machine and it's just so bold and simple and and to me that's what you know and i'm not knocking you know like i think that's one thing i just want to say here too for any any presentation like this like this is just my opinion these are all just our opinions like you know, I'm not trying to like criticize anybody, but, um, you know, you brought up another good point, like the numbing cream thing. Like I, I, I won't use it, you know, and I'm sure some of my clients hate me for that, but I, you know, I don't, there's people in my studio that do, I don't knock them for that. That's fine. That's their <laughs> whatever. But I just feel like there's something different about, uh, I mean, that's one thing definitely with the Samoans. Like when you look at their tradition, like thinking that this guy's going to sit there for like five to seven days, get tattooed every day. And, you know, I mean, that's, that, that's like, that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, that's a life accomplishment. And I think, so it's at that point, it's not just the actual like art of it, but it's the yeah. rich. And I think that's one thing that I feel like tattooing is missing now because people get their designs off social media. They use them and cream, like, you know, they make, they book their appointment off some app and maybe those rituals are gone. Like where, like yeah. even when I got my back done in 1998 in Japan, it was like partly machine, partly by hand, but I wrote a letter you know, then I called, then I went there and with gifts and, you know, there's, there's still a little more. There's mystique. a process. Yeah. yeah. So we, um, I didn't mean to put in cause you're having such a great conversation, um, but we did have an audience, uh, audience question related to the topic you're talking about. Um, Christian wanted to know, do either of you have, oh, do either of you have either of you faced any rebuttals to, to Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the question. Do either of you have any rebuttals to people that criticize the cleanliness of hand tools compared to tattooing machines? Oh yeah, heck yeah. Uh, you you know and that's one of the things that I think that we've uh, we've had to, we we've had to overcome in the last hey, ten years. You know, maybe and I, I think it's been, been a bit longer for uh, the Japanese artists, but for the Samoan artists. We we only recently switched from the bone to the needles uh, in the early 2000s, you know, and so and, and that was an issue. You know, we were having issues with um, being able to clean the tools. So the way that we do it now, uh, we're able, you know, with the needles, they're a lot easier to make. So we the cleanliness is it's the same as machine tattooing. You know, everything's covered. We come down. Um, needle, needles are, we, we're in California, we do one-time use needles, so there's no, uh, we don't have any issues with cross-contamination, um, where we've developed a, one of the only ESIPs that's been accepted by the California Environmental Health Agency to be able to perform to tell. You know, otherwise we wouldn't be able to, you know, showcase what our, you know, this cultural tattooing at a lot of public events so. yeah i think um as far as the japanese go too like we're 
we're at a point now where our tools are just as clean as any machine tool. Um, and, I, and, and like I said, this is something where I think both of us, we're still maintaining like, you know, like, like this is like my current Tabori stick, like this part is stainless steel. So maybe, you know, hundreds of years ago, this would have been a piece of wood. And then um, here's like, you know, a stainless steel cartridge system, there's the needles. And then uh, that goes on the end here. But so, so basically this whole implement here can be autoclaved. And then after this is used, um, it gets hit with a torch and thrown away. So at this point, like, yeah, like, but I think the actual motion that we're using is the same as it has been for hundreds of years. So, and, and yeah. that's, what I, you know, um, and I, and, and I, I've, I've actually heard people that, that are against using the stainless steel for Simone to tell, like they think they should still be using the boar tusk. But I think like, I, I think that's up to each master. And I think for me, like, you know, like the, the, the tradition versus like the potential of getting someone sick, like, you know, like, I think like, um, it's, it's important for me to operate in a hygienic fashion, but I think like, you know, like with this, like I can basically do the exact same thing, but, you know, use all stainless steel. And uh, it's the same for us as Samoans, you know, this is, so with our tools, you know, everything is covered up, plastic, um, you know, this is where, where's my camera over here? So we're, you know, we're tied on right here. And this is, this whole thing is a single use, you know, the, um, so there's no issue of cross-contamination. Um, I think one of the things that, you know, especially with Samoan to Tau, uh, and, and specifically the men's and there was uh, for a long time, there still is mortality rate, you know, there's, uh, but for a long time, the mortality rate was, you know, fairly significant, which was, which is why a lot of people didn't want to get it. And, and it, it wasn't completely just to the cleanliness of the tools in the work environment. You got really, these people are walking away with huge tattoos, you know, and then you're walking out. Once you walk out and you're taking care of that, you know, if they go, you know, rolling dirt, go sit on a, uh, you know, old grimy bus stop, not my fault, you know, but, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, sometimes people don't take into consideration when they're kind of just looking the overall, uh, you know, consequences of doing these tattoos. And, and and that's also, I think it's one of the beautiful things of, of the Samoan tattoo. It's not a little tattoo. It's nice when people are able to get, you know, um, a small memoir of, of, of cultural tattooing, a little armband or something. It's one thing. But when you go for, you know, whether it's the women or the men, you're going, the women, they get, you know, it's, it's roughly a third of their body that, you know, is getting covered with these, you know, by the tools. And the men, it's over half. You know, it's, a, it's, you know, you're almost getting a full body suit and, you know, in a matter of days. And we really, um, culturally, we, we push people to, you know, once we start, let's finish. So, mm -hmm. you know, even um, today I'm working on, today's day I have going on a, you know, on a on a guy that's going his, his peo, his malofie, and, you know, he's hurt. And yesterday, yesterday was, I think, 10, 10 hours. So today, you're feeling it, you know, and uh, but we're going for the finish line, you know. So, uh, but that's just part of the, you know, one of the other things to more. If you know, you want your tattoo, you have to answer to the tool. So, mm -hmm. and we got a lot of comments in from the audience that are saying that they do view getting a tattoo in a ritualistic manner, and they do find that you know it is a process for them. Um, and tied to that, um, we did get uh, the the issue of a big bad word that hides all over the place, appropriation mm -hmm. in terms of these cultural tattoos. Um, I'm going to read off a question um, specifically for C from Christian again. Is there a specific process for obtaining a traditional Samoan tattoo? I appreciate tattoo history and understand the tattoos were earned, but all the tattoos I've gotten so far have been chosen by myself. And I am curious as an outsider who wants to learn about slash experience a Samoan tattoo myself one day. So this is that's a um, interesting question. Talking about we just you know we 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 had a little talk yesterday and when and you know the interesting thing with the Tatao and you know I I would like to believe everybody that does uh, this traditional hand application I, I would hope that none of them use numbing creams or anything and that's the earning it you know it's you know you come in you ask for your your tattoo 
Um, obviously, we're, we're here, you know, living in the States. Um, but even if you're in Samoa and you weren't paying money, you're still paying in, um, you know, whatever goods, food, fine mats. But at the end of the day, you have to lay down and you have to earn that tattoo. And that's, that's where, where you earn your tattoo. I think one thing, um, and, um, and I think for me, like, as a non-Samoan, like, I, I'm just going to quote here because, you know, I think it's very important that we allow every culture to represent themselves. But I was just on a panel at the Bishop Museum with um, Sua Sulape Peter, who's, um, you know, in the same family as he, um, he's the eldest son of the patriarch. But, and he was asked the same question, and he was saying the Tufungas, the tattoo masters, like, they choose you. It doesn't, it's not so much you approach them, but they choose you, was his answer that he gave in that panel. Um, so I think, like, that's sort of, you know, but I think like, yeah, like as far as the Japanese go, like, you know, like I think we're uh, not not that our tattoos have less significance, but rather like there isn't quite it's more if the person feels that the person can do it, you know, and and the sort of the ideas match up. So I, I do think maybe there is a little more sense of uh, importance with what the Samoans are doing to a certain degree. Here's another question about Tatao C. Um... This is from Tara. Oh, I'm sorry, Tella. She asks, I understand that enduring the pain is part of the practice. With the implementation of new tools, wouldn't that change the practice, essentially changing the tradition? Implementation. Malo Tala. Um in the uh so this is interesting. It's something that we 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 kind of talked about. So in the change of the tools, the old tools was the comb, was it were these bone uh combs and you couldn't get you, know, you if, if a lot of times if a guy was done in five days he's on the brink of death you know so you really with with the old tools we had to spread out the tatao a lot more it was I, I was tattooed with the with the bone tools and i did nine days over seven out of 17 days um total you know now i'm running guys i, I just finished a guy last week five days straight so in the answering of the pain, I feel like we've kind of made that adjustment with the tools since we're going to the needles. And then, you know, it's 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 not as traumatic to the body. Um, so we're pushing them harder. So I, I think that, you know, that we, we've kind of maintained that balance. Um, yeah, that's great. So um, I think with these series we've gotten so many questions about appropriation and people wanting to be incredibly respectful of um not being appropriative um they really enjoy and love the aesthetic um so i think it's great that people are asking those questions um but do you do you get pushback from people in terms of maybe them thinking that this is specifically only for your culture that these tattoos should only be for people from your culture <laughs> you, you want to start <laughs> sure, I, yeah i mean i think we both have a lot of opinions <laughs> and thoughts here um okay so I, I think i can put this into different categories like, on one hand, um, I've had clients of mine, and for the record, um, since Japan opened to the West in the Meiji period, they've always tattooed non-Japanese. Um, I've never heard of a Japanese tattoo artist that's had a problem tattooing someone that's not Japanese. I've never heard, and, you know, a lot of Japanese masters, including my ex-master, have taught and titled non-Japanese. So I think it's more about the individual rather than their ethnicity. Um, that said, I've had a lot of like clients of mine, usually white people, and it's usually from another white person telling them that they're cultural appropriators. And I'll say, I, I, I take that as an offense to me. And I actually think like, that's like basically saying, I don't have the right to put this on somebody. So I think, but while they're trying to be respectful of Japanese culture, I think it's actually like somewhat racist to think that a Japanese person can't do their art on someone. But as far as like, I, but I, and then I think there's other layers too. Like, you know, are you wearing this? Are you performing this? Like, are you... um like, are you of non-Japanese descent wearing Japanese tattoo? Are you of non-Japanese descent doing Japanese tattoos? And I think for me, it just comes down to an individual respect issue. Um, you know, I think like, you know, like if you're going to partake of any culture that is not your own, and this goes for everyone, like, you know, well, just do it respectfully and know your place. Um, I think if someone's going to let you into something, then be grateful, work hard and, and try to show respect to that culture. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of really amazing people that do Japanese tattoos that aren't Japanese. You know, and uh, I think especially when it comes to like merchandising and companies, 
I think appropriation sucks when it's just some big company stealing some artwork and using it. Like, you know, you'll see some stuff like, well, you could have just hired somebody from that culture to do it kind of thing. Um, I think those are different issues. But when it comes to tattoos also, there's such an intensely personal nature to tattoos. Um, and like, you know, you could like as a tattoo artist, like, you could get asked by somebody of a certain culture to do a, cult, a tattoo from that culture that's not your own, but you're doing it to help them. And there's, there's so many different layers here. So, and I feel like a lot of times we get asked this, I get asked this question a lot in interviews and everyone wants that like easy, like check mark. And it's not because culture is fluid. Like every situation is different. And then like, like I think even like with me and C, the, when we first met, we actually met in Hawaii of all places. Um, but um, and I tattooed a Hanya mask on him and he was like really adamant that I do some of it by Tabori, you know? And, and even though like, I was like, you know, a little, shaky on it but it was like this you know but it was important i think for us as as humans to like meet and kind of like have that exchange and and so i think like um in short answer there is no really you know i mean i think it it all comes down to respect in every situation like if you're acting respectfully and even then you might get criticized but you know i think for me like every decision i make for myself is based on that like can i respect myself and am i showing respect to the people around me On to you, C. Yes, before we jump over to C, Amanda just um, wanted to provide this insight. Um, an audience member said, that's really wonderful to point out. I love what Taki said about appropriation and disrespecting the art, the artist. Culture is fluid and complex, and so is art. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah you know, um, appropriation, golly, you know, we, we, we hear a lot. Um, I, you know, such an individual thing, and yeah, I think you know one of the ways that for me that I I I, I try to battle appropriation is by uh, giving knowledge to people about what they're getting. You know, whether you know if if, if non Polynesians ask me for a tattoo for whatever reason, I it's fine, I love it. You know, and and I and I also love the the opportunity to be able to uh, give them an insight, give them my knowledge of of what they're actually looking for. Because, I, you know, maybe appropriation could be, you know, somebody coming in and wanting this design for this specific reason. I mean, they're just, you know, applying their own meaning, but that's not what it is. And, and I think when we, when we give people this knowledge and, and share with them what we know and, and how these things are worn, then, you know, we, we're, we're able to, you know, avoid the appropriation. Uh, you know, and, and I think it's more on the, you know, the side of the artist, um, and especially for Polynesian tattooing, and I, I don't, I don't, I'm not any artist that is gonna do it just trying to, you know, trying to trying to fulfill a need of a client. Um, you know, it's I, I think it's more when we, you know, you you find these people that go and and this is their, uh, you know, their one stop, and this is all they do, and it's and then it's onto that person to, you know, pay your dues and give your respect and 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 acknowledge the 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 culture that you're sharing and that's you know and, and and you know i don't know i don't i don't want to start the appropriation police you know it's it's something that you know I, I i just with knowledge you know the more people know the more our clients know then the more they're going to be able to get get their their tattoo and get it in a respectful manner and and to where it's respected in the, in the community. And then, you know, there's always going to be those naysayers. There's always going to be somebody that, uh, you know, and it's going to be either, you know, a, a Samoan, a Hawaiian, or a Japanese, or, you know, somebody that feels like that's their, you know, personal cultural inheritance. And, and I, you know, everybody's allowed to have their own feelings. And so uh, with, with those things, you know, that's something we've always talked about, and, and usually they tend to be people that aren't tattooed. And when, once people get this tattoo, uh, you know, you just have a, a greater appreciation for those that, that have gotten it. You know, even if if I see people with a full sleeve, full color sleeve, I'm just like, man, you had to go through it for that. You know, yeah. And and so with uh, you know Polynesian tattooing is you know specifically the appropriation is just a matter of lack of knowledge and, and people trying to, um, you know, trying to maybe put something out there that's not really intended for, for you know, for that means. Great, thank you, thank you guys. Um, I think Kasha wanted to hop in with a question. Oh, hi, or Kasha. 
Yes, hi. Um, I'm, I'm your moderator, so I was like behind the scenes, but as the American Indian Resource Center librarian, I had some um, sort of a question, and I know Taki had mentioned that she had, had helped um, other Indigenous peoples with their tattoos, and um, I just thought that it was like the opposite of appropriation, how you're, you're uh, reawakening and revitalizing um, hand tattooing with other Indigenous cultures, and I, I wanted to sort of like you know, ask if you can elaborate on that. And um, many times Taki has mentioned, you know, tattooing is about, uh, you know, embracing your indigenous side and, and indigeneity. So I thought that that was a very fascinating comment and would like to hear more about that. Um, so, yeah, you know, I've, I've been really blessed to uh, um, have requests from a lot of these uh, native uh, Native American tribes to be able to perform artwork for them. So I have a um, one in particular is the the Hoopa and the Yurox up in in Northern California. I've been doing a lot of work with them, and we spent a lot of time over there um, and bringing back their their basket designs. And some of the, these are, these are their family designs that you know you can do with the machine, but it just means so much more with the tools and and. Uh, it's, you know, that's been amazing to be able to help bring that back. Another one that's kind of been more, I think, um, very spiritual and is, is really a heavy tattoo, it's small, is is the Women's 111. And so we've had quite a few uh, sisters, you know, come and ask for this, and they want it to be applied with the hand tools. And so in doing this, we also applied our Samoan culture and how we encase us doing traditional tattoo. That's, that's been one of the things that I believe is we, you know, recreating these ceremonies, you know, so with this tattoo, especially with the Beautiful. native brothers that and, and sisters is that, you know, while we do these, these marks and, and we want to give these marks, these cultural and family significances, we need to have the ceremonies. And that's one of the big things. So, um, you know, it was really amazing to be able to, to have those requests and it's, the, you know, the, you can feel it in the room. You know, when 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 we're doing this work and we're doing this work for our for our cultures, um, you know, you you get I'm kind of get the chills right now. I'm sitting in my tatau room, but you know, you you feel that that spirit. You know, you feel that we're we're doing something that's really a service for our people. That's uh, you you know, we're 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 not only tattooing the skin. You're tattooing people's souls. You know, they're and putting that bringing that out. You know, into you know, uh, something tangible, something visible that, um, you know, that that's back. And one of the beautiful stories that I heard, and I and I know they weren't tattoo cuts, but they're from this uh, Central California area, and they had stopped doing their their one elevens because, uh, I guess it was it was they were they were doing the tattoos from a story that was related to me. They were doing the tattoo at the time that these girls got their first menstrual cycle. And so these young women would be going down the street and they were getting raped by, you know, minors and other these, you know, just miscreants running around. And so they stopped the tattoo, you know, and then um, another story I heard with that tattoo that it was, it was a sign of a woman that's, you know, dedicated herself to, you know, the spiritual, you know, path and is ready to lead the, you know, her people. And, and so all these things, you know, these are very similar to, to the, the roles that are our traditional tattoos for our Samoan women. So I, you know, we just felt like it was so appropriate to be able to do this with the tools and, and to start bringing back the ceremonies. And so with uh, a few of these 111s, at, at the end of it, with the Samoans, we, you know, they danced their, their, their tattoo for us. And so we applied the same thing with, you know, these sisters and it was just, it was beautiful. They brought medicines and, and I see, you know, I'm getting the chills talking about it, but you can feel it, you know, this, the, you know, the ceremony and the, um, just the spirit, the, you know, the, the, the energy is moving in those rooms. So I, I, it's amazing to be able to perform these things for, for other cultures and, and to be able to use the, the, the Samoan vehicle of tattooing. That's, that's amazing. And, um, I think, we can say thank you to both Taki and C for for sharing that tradition because it it means a lot I think to to everyone just to see that 
and that, you know, we're all human. We share our cultures and the, our knowledge. Um, so I think that was beautiful. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get you in my room one of these days, huh, Gasha? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I am looking. <laughs> I'll get I'll I'll give you contact details afterwards. We'll hook you. Yeah. Um and what was your second part, your second question for Taki, Kasha, if you could repeat it? Oh, um, I think it was just like similar, just about uh, indigeneity and um uh I, I know that with like indigenous cultures, there's like a, a lot of you know, you're stronger together and there's a lot of uh, you know, respect for each other and similar views. Um so yeah. I don't know if that was clear or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think what C said was beautiful and, and I, I can honestly say too like I remember like um at one of the conventions we had up in Burlingame, um, you know, like uh three native women came down to, to get tattooed by C E and um, you know, because they didn't actually do it on the floor, they did it up in the hotel room, you know, it's just for more privacy. But and I swear though, they came downstairs afterwards and it, it was like this like aura of light around them. You know, what I mean like it, it like there's this pre like everyone like literally like it's in the movies when everyone turns, but like, I feel like he really helped them unlock something. And it was just like, it, it was, you know, and that's like, I think at the end of the day, like, you know, like, that's what we all want, right? Is that the, the tattoo magic that, that that's, the, you know, and, and not in like the carny kind of way, but in that way of like, you know, just actual real exchanges between people. And our audience is loving this conversation. Um, Sophia, this is a high compliment to both you and Sitaki. She says, I could literally listen to these dudes all day. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you guys need like a show or something <laughs> podcast i don't know i'm just <laughs> we'll take it on the road yeah. <laughs> so could you um tell us a little bit because the audience is curious could you tell us a little bit about your own personal journeys into why you wanted to be tattoo artists you want to go ahead see or um you know mine <sighs> It kind of was a fluke, you know, it was just, uh, I, you know, I, I wasn't tattooing and I just, I'd drawn up a tattoo and I had a friend do it on me and didn't do it very well. You know, and I was just like, oh man, dude, I'll do this myself. So I started tattooing and um, just found out I was good at it, you know, and I, I just, you know, progressed it from there and uh, really, really quickly in my, my professional career. I, I ran into the family to, I ran into one of my, my mentor, Suape Alaipa Petelo from Samoa. And when I seen him, you know, he's been documented in tattoo magazines and National Geographic and, you know, all, you know, he's, he's most documented tattoo out of Samoa. And so when I seen him, I was like, wow, this is, you know, it's just amazing that this, this man's over here and he's such a, you know, uh, a, a pillar of knowledge and, um, you know, it was really quick. I, I I got my chance to get tattooed by him, and where when he, when I started tattooing, I I I started tattooing for lowrider tattoo, and I like doing portraits, and I like you know every, doing everything, and I I think after meeting him, meeting Sua, and then through another few of my friends, Sua, Steve Looney, um, Taki, you know, we kind of just ended up, you know, going down this road to where I'm at now. And I, you know, I, I'm predominantly Polynesian tattoo. I can tattoo anything, but I, and I love tattooing this. So it was, you know, I kind of felt like I found a calling, you know, and, and, and doing this Samoan tattooing and uh, tattooing in general. And, and one of my good friends told me that, uh, you know, uh, my friend Seymour Canio that, that works with me is like, Hey, People don't choose tattoo. Tattoo chooses you. So it's, you know, it's it's, it's just one of those things. You know, it's a uh, it's a lovely craft and art to be in. And uh, when you when you, you know, do your dedication, it, it it's it's even more so. I think um, it's interesting because like when you know, when he talks about his mentor, um, Adivaya Patello, like um, Patello is seriously like you know he's a Tufunga, a master tattoo artist. He's a shaman, he's a chief, he's a cultural ambassador, he's all of that. And I, I think I had the privilege of um, watching C kind of go through this. You know, I mean, I think when I met C, you know, he was a great tattoo artist, he was a lot of fun. He was doing his thing, he's a good guy. But through, over the years, I saw him kind of transform from, I guess like, um, and you know, there's no con, con, 
condescension here because I love this man, but it's like I watched him mature into becoming a chief and becoming, you know, that level of Tufunga being granted the tools. And, um, you know, they always say, the Simones will say, like, to serve is to lead, you know, and I saw him serve the family. And, and it was really like, it, it was a real magical thing to watch that transformation, um, oh. you know. Um, but as far as I go, you know, like, I think um, growing up out here and then, like, my first recollections of Japanese tattooing were, like, these Japanese TV shows where they kind of show these tattoos. Um, and I, I think in a lot of ways, I saw that as, like, this, like, you know, sort of like, a, like that was just meant for me. Um, my actual introduction into tattoos was more because, I guess, like, just teenage rebellion. Like, you know, I was a punk rock skater kid. So, you know, like, I, I, at that time, like, you know, Leo Zuleta, Neo Tribal was really, like, the coolest thing out there. It was really, like, you know, we're talking, like, 1991, so it was very, like, you know, not... Like, if you, had, if you saw someone in 1991 with a tattoo, it would, you'd immediately talk to them, because, like, oh, where'd you get it? What's You know, because there, there were so few of us, you know? And I think a lot of that, like, I, I guess I always knew I wanted to circle back to Japanese tattooing. But that initial interest was just like the kind of just like the, the the wow factor, like the like this is really something different and, um you know, uh, artistic, but just edgy at the same time. Like, you know, it's funny, like now at my age to think these things. But at the time, it was really like, I think, part of growing up for me. Um, and then, I, you know, I think in, in a parallel way to see, like I started out kind of like with that sort of a mentality and then ended up to where. I feel like I'm doing stuff like this and speaking at museums and, and, and you know, we're, we're tr kind of trying to define a way to like, you know, affirm a people's culture and spread that. So, you know, I think it's kind of went from like sort of like teenage angst and rebellion, you know, to like an actual real cultural expression. And, and not that teenage angst and rebellion isn't because it really is, you know, and, and I guess that's what led me here. Oh, that's great. Thank you guys so much for sharing those stories. Yeah. With us. Oh, another note on that. I'll tell you what, you know, Taki, um, since the, the time I've known him from when I first met him, you know, he's, uh, I think one of the, you know, best tattooing publishers, writers, one of, one of the most hardest working tattooists <laughs> in the industry. And, you know, and one of the things, you know, learning Taki's story and, and seeing all the punk rock pictures. And um, I, I think so one of the things that I've always identified with, um, with him is kind of, you know, we, we, we're American kids. We grew up over here in this, you know, U.S. culture, and then found our way back to, you know, tattooing, um, you know, primarily our cultural tattoos. And so it's it it is really, you know, fun uh, a fun story, and, and and it's amazing, you know. I mean, you know, knowing Taki and, and Taki's always been an inspiration, and and you know, just like you know really going for it, you know, and, and not, you know, just pulling up halfway, you know, going all the way. And, and even in, in my own culture, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been beautiful just to go from, you know, being an American kid, American born, and then um, reconnecting. I, I mean, I grew up in a Samoan household. I grew up around a bunch of Samoans. But then once we reconnected with the, with, with, through tattooing, it's just really changed your life, you know, and, and, and it gives you a different sense of appreciation of your own culture and then other cultures as well. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that both of you were able to connect to your culture through arts and also that you were shock of shocks, able to make a living out of it, right? Because we tend <laughs> to compromise, you know, like what we love for, yeah. you know, uh, you know, making the almighty dollar. And I'm so, it's so inspiring and joyful to hear that that like coinciding so beautifully you know um you. yeah and everyone's your friendship and your bffs <laughs> the audience is saying um and also um talk you had touched on how kind of like the um the the public's perception of tattooing has kind of flipped where now it's very much accepted in general right um but if i understand correctly like the perception is in japan it's very much not right and it's seen as other places viewed as such a beautiful art form, and um, it it has such wide appeal. But apparent, but in a, Japan, because of the the history and like the ties to criminality, it's it's seen in like you know a not so favorable way. And we were getting a lot of questions in the audience about like what are if you can sh shed a light on like modern perceptions on tattoos are in Japan, and there are a lot of questions about bathhouses or onsens and like. Are people allowed? Is it true that people aren't allowed to go in if they have tattoos and whatnot? So, could you address that? 
Sure. I mean, like, and, you know, I, I do live here, but two of my, uh, two of the people at my shop are actually Japanese nationals that we got green cards for. Um, so, you know, we still maintain a lot of ties with over there. And like, um, actually very recently, um, for a while, the, the legal status of tattooing was in limbo because they, they had this law that said, if you don't have a medical practitioner's license, you can't work with blood. And it was essentially made for cosmetic tattooing. But through that law, there was a, a handful of tattooers were arrested. I know a lot of my friends were like, you know, making legal preparations. They were worried about their shops. Um, but um, eventually that they actually went to the Supreme Court of Japan. Um, so the ruling was overturned. So tattooing is legal over the now. Um, ironically, the last time it was legalized, it was legalized by the Americans um, during the occupation after the war, um, you know, one of the MacArthur's aides said like, oh, this is beautiful. And he legalized it. Um, but that's still hasn't changed like the general public perception i think as a general um most of the people don't want to see it uh, most of my friends when they go back they'll wear long sleeves um a lot of people ask about the sento experience and things like that um, i just recently went uh well re when i say recently god pre-covid so I, it was already like three or four years ago but um you know one of my friends over there shige is a tattoo artist so you know they're they have body suits and and we wanted to kind of go on like a sento tour and a temple tour and so he would call places and be like, well, we're, we're not Yakuza, but we have body suits. And, they, and some of them would be flat out like, you can't stay here. Other ones would be like, well, you can use the bathhouse area after 10 p.m. Um, There's other ones that would say, well, you can't use our public rooftop bath. But if you guys pay extra, you can have like, you know, a bath on your balcony and things like that. So um, I think a lot of it, it's just it's still stigmatized. Um, I, but I also I'm not um, I, I don't have a problem with that. Like, I feel like I don't, um, like, I'm not going to walk into someone else's house and tell them what to do. I got mm -hmm. tattoos knowing this. Um, you know, my parents were, my father was actually a, a Kyoto University professor. So as you can imagine, they were very anti-tattoo. Um, mm -hmm. When I got tattooed in high school, they were immediately like, you need to laser that off. And I was like, I don't want to. And, you know, but we had a really nice moment when I'd been tattooing for about 10 years when they told me, like, you know, we never supported your tattoo career, but it's because we didn't think you'd have a good life, you know, because, because. Mm -hmm. But with their upbringing, they felt that I would be ostracized, that I wouldn't be able to make a living, that I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be able to travel or do all the things that, you know, make parents happy, right? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still an Asian kid. So, you know, I got these expectations <laughs> from my parents. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I think in this new era, like, both C and I have, like, been able to, like, like find a lot of fulfillment in what we do, like, artistically, financially, travel-wise, meeting people, and then also helping other people. Like, at the end of the day, like, like, I tell people that, like, I don't, you know, I don't think that, like, tattooing, like, we're, we're not, quote, unquote, essential, if you want to talk about the current lock, the, the lockdown from before, where we weren't considered an essential thing, and maybe we're not, but, you know, you go to any culture at any time, there's cave paintings and tattoos, and, you know, I mean, like, everybody had tattooing, so, at whatever point, we fill some need that society has, and mm -hmm. in this case, I think, as far as the two of us goes, a lot of that has to do with identity and representation and, like, expressing yourself, and I think at the end of the day, like, without those things, like life gets pretty mundane, I think. Mm -hmm. I have a, a comment. <laughs> I'm back, hi guys. So uh, our previous artist, tattoo artist uh, in our series, James Spooner had, had mentioned that um, his favorite thing about tattooing was not actually the, I, I think I could be quoting it incorrectly, not the actual like art per se, but the, hearing the stories or um, just having, you know, meeting people and just like, you know, uh, getting to know folks. So I thought like that sort of was similar to what he said. And um, I think it's true, you know, like you're not just doing art, you're, um, you're hearing people's stories, you're sharing your experience too. So um, I don't know if you guys have any, if Katrina, if it's okay, if you have any like great stories that like you remember um, while tattooing, what, what like um, resonated with you guys if I can sort of go at that route. Yeah, you know what, uh, man, great. We probably bought, got about a thousand and one stories each, <laughs> at least. Um, yeah, the stories, the energy, the, you know, um, I, I think culturally Samoan, culturally tattooing has a reason. There's a reason there is, it's done for protection, it's done for, for guidance to be able to remind you that, you know, hey, this is who you are, this is what you're supposed to do. 
Um, so one of these stories, and it's, it's, it's completely off the subject, it was a machine tattoo, but I was over here late night at the shop one day, and then um, I had my back door open, this guy comes in, you know, you know, big, tall, white guy, and then he's kind of a little bit aggravated. He comes in, he's like, you guys do tattoos here? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you've been drinking? And he's like, I had a couple beers, but I'm not drunk. And I was like, all right. And I was like, so I was, you know, as I felt a little something. I was like, what can I help you with? And he's like, he, so he starts telling me the story. And he says, man, he's like, three days ago, so my son, amazing kid, um, at these trampoline houses, and he does this double backflip, and he lands off of the trampoline. He's been in the hospital, and he just, he's, he, you know, he has, uh, I think he, it was a C7 or, you know, it was a couple vertebrae, but he knew on the neck the injuries. And he's like, you know, he came in, and I, then all of a sudden, I seen the, you know, desperation, you know, is, uh, uh, you know, and he's just like, I need to give my son whatever I can give, him, you know? And, uh, you know, just, whoa, you know, just it stops your world, you know? And, it, and it's, you know, it is, you know, I, I gave him a little, you know, I gave him a, a set of Akualoa. Just say, hey, man, you know, you're going through this pain, you know, and it's, uh, you know, that design, it's a centipede that represents our endurance through life's pains, whether they be physical or in this case, you know, emotional. And it is it's something, you know, you, you, our, our minds and our spirits are so powerful. And I think through the act of tattooing, whether it's machine, whether it's traditional, we, we have this opportunity to bring it all together, you know, and, 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 and for him, I, I, I never seen him after that day. Uh, you know, I've always wondered about him and, and his son and, and, but, you know, I just came in and, you know, he's, he was a big guy, you know, and he just, you know, went from being angry to just trying to fight back tears. So I, you know, and that's just, you know, you, you, I, th I have a million stories and I'm sure Taki does too, but it is, it, it is something wonderful that, um, you know, you, we get we get the good, bad, and the ugly. You know, and and it's, it's we. I, I think when we take people into our uh, as clients, they quickly become uh, friends, and they're in here for for a reason. And, and it's it's wonderful to be able to have the position to be a, be able to help to you know facilitate that, and 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 you know maybe give them a little bit of hope or you know guidance, whatever. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like, and I think for me, like, rather than talk about a specific story, I think like um, one of the things is that like, like, I, I think what that previous presenter said is absolutely right. Because like, if you want to be an artist, you can work on canvas or something. If you don't like it, throw it away. You can sell it. You can do whatever. Like, this isn't like that. Like, you know, like it was funny because somebody asked the other day, like, oh, are all these back piece drawings done? And I was like, well, I usually I think maybe like 10 percent finish um you know just for whatever reasons maybe it's pain maybe it's financial people move away they pass on things happen um but i do definitely feel like you know and i know this is definitely true of the simone total but like you know like when i finish a back piece like i feel like a forever like like i went through an experience with that person i also feel like um like the two people that i've apprenticed you know like uh colin i did a sleeve on him um alberto our current apprentice like you know i'd worked on his back and like i feel like you know, I always joke with people when someone's like on the table, like you can, you know, you get to know them. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like you can see into their soul a bit. And, and I know that's definitely true of the Samoan Tatal, the experience that they share when they go through that highly intense experience. So I think um, in a lot of ways, like I agree. Yeah. It's not always about the finished product. It's, and, and that's why I think like, I agree with CE. Well, all of you, the, the ritual is so important, you yeah. know, like, like it's not, and, and that's even like, um, one of my friends has this sign and it says like, you know, the imperfections add to its beauty, but I agree. Cause it's like, it's, it's not like you're buying a sticker, you know, that you're going to put in a safety deposit box. It's not an NFT. Like it's, it's a, it's a tattoo. Like some of the lines might go out some of the, you know, some part might scab out, but it might not heal perfectly, but that's, that's life. Life's not perfect. And I think that's yeah. what it is. That's why the universal need to, to express themselves with this is because it does show life and its ups and downs and like, what is it like glory and degradation, right? Like it's all there. And I, I think, I know, you know, CE feels this way, but I don't, we're also just like super grateful that we get to do this. Like, you know, like, I mean, there's, there's a lot worse ways to live your life. And like, you know, 
Um, I'm not saying every day is perfect, but like, you know, we really enjoy what we do. We love it. It's a, it and that's what it is. I guess for us, it's like we were tattooed people before we were tattooing. And for us, like, you know, we just we we love this culture, like the culture of tattooing. Aside from our respective ethnic, ethnic cultures, I'm saying the actual culture of tattooing. We love it. No, thank you so thank much you. for sharing with us. That's really amazing. Really lovely. Um, and I think we need to keep in mind that, like, the service that you provide is very different. For you. Like, it's incomparable to any other kind of personal service. Like, it's incredibly intimate. And you are, you're, like, on top of someone. You're close to them, like, physically. But also, you're spending hours and hours of time together, right? So it's, like, I, I can see, like, that that would be a very intense, as a non-tattooed person, I can see that as a, being, like, a very intense experience to go through. Um, and the trust they put in them. Share. Yeah, sorry, Kasha? And the trust that they put in them. Oh. <laughs> and that, that's something we don't take lightly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's actually, and I know it's actually destroys a lot of tattoo artists. I know a lot of tattoo artists that, that it's a lot, that's a heavy weight. And I know like a lot of them like have problems with that. It's, it's, it's not always easy to, to balance. Wow. Thank you guys. Thank you again for sharing that. Um, we did get a lot of questions. Um, C, could you explain more about the um, bestowing the title of, and I'm sorry if I'm totally butchering this, Sulape? Yeah, the process and um, what that means. And then kind of interrelated, Taki, um, someone asked, can you explain the title of Hori, H-O-R-I? So, um, C, maybe you want to take it away first? Okay. Um, so, my my chief title is Suluape. Uh, it's from the family Suluape from uh, Lefanga in Samoa. So, uh, in our tradition of tattooing, the, t the tools were brought to us by two twin ladies, Taimanti and Lefanga. Um, when they brought us the, the aqua or the, the basket of tools, they gave it to two families. It was, uh, so we have a, a traditional, it's called a falupenga, but there, there it's a formal announcement of somebody, um, their title and, and what it pertains to, whether it's their village or in our, our case, it's, uh, it's the work. So, oh, faliluo suosasuwa. And um, so this is the, tr this title has been uh, passed down throughout the generations for at least two, 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the title that I have is uh, my mentor, Suwape uh, Alaiva, is the, what we call the head of the family, Sa'ole Aina, and he's the, uh, the one that gave me my title, I, I received my title, like I said, in 2015, and uh, was it was done out here in the states. Uh, but we did a traditional Samoan Salfai, which is uh, a ceremony that bestowed when you bestow a title on you. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's 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 really an honor to be able to be a part of something that's been around for for so long, and and. Samoan culture, having the title uh, of the Kufunga, so there's, oh, like I said, there's only there's two families, uh, Sua and Tol uh, Toluena. So in these two families, we're the ones that have the cultural rights to be able to perform the work in, and even more importantly, at the end of the work, to give the blessing for the tattoos that we finished. And then with the with regards to like uh, I know a lot of people that if you have a surface interest in Japanese tattooing you'll see titles like hori something, um, the the verb horu means to dig or carve, um, so you know and if you look at the actual like tabori it's actually like it's it's like a carving motion, um, if you look at if you know a bit about Japanese history during the Edo period there was like an explosion of popular arts abuki woodblock prints, um, when it came to woodblock prints like you know you'd have an artist would paint something. And then a carver would actually carve the prints. And I'll tell you, like, with some of the intricacy of the woodblock prints, I think the carver actually had the harder job. Um, but the carver would also get credit. Like, on the print, there would actually be, like, a hoary something. So their name would actually go on there. Um, it's also speculated by a lot of scholars that some of those original carvers were some of the original tattooers of that era, which makes sense because they're used to handling knives and needles and whatnot. Um, and, you know, so... And also, that's where the tradition of signing a back piece comes from. There's like a, you know, like a, a, a square, a rectangle, rather, with a, a signature. So as far as the Hori title, you know, the, like I said, that comes from to dig or carve. 
a horishi, um, you know, is a tattooer or a carver. Horimono is one of the words for tattooing. It can also mean like, uh, it means carved object. Um, you know, there's many different titles or uh, names for tattooing depending on era and you know, region of Japan. Horimono can also mean like a, a sword or some like, you know, precious carved object. Um, as far as myself goes, like um, my, I've actually gone through two different titling phases. Um, and it kind of just reflects my experience and it also demonstrates two different types of titles. Um, my, my full first name is Takahiro. So when I was in, inducted into a tattoo family in, uh, 1998, um, you know, like my, my then master was like, okay, I'm going to name you. And it was funny. One of the other apprentices like, oh, Hori Hiro. He's like, no, 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 it's going to be Hori Taka. So he used the, the, you know, the Hori prefix and then part of my name, um, you know, I, I stayed in that family for 10 years and, and for personal reasons, I left at a certain point. And at that point, I felt that it wouldn't be right to continue with the title that he had given me. Um, I think like and I remember he had said in an interview once, like, you need to be titled by a master. And he said not necessarily, but it means a lot that I was titled by mine. And I, and I, and I had that feeling. But in that same notion, it was important for me to change it. Um, I, I don't know, like how much. Uh, knowledge of Japanese language you have, but the the characters that read Takahiro can also read as Ryudai. So I actually put the Hori to the back, like Tabori, and it's Ryudai Bori. So that became my new title, and that's what I'm using now. So I I kind of went through both of them, actually getting a title from you know like a very venerated Japanese tattoo master, and then also titling myself. Um, I think amongst the Japanese, we don't like I said, we don't have. Uh, you know, and I'm not trying to devalue what we do, but like I don't think like our titling isn't quite as um you know like a sacred and solemn. I think is a Samoan ritual, um, but at the same time, it means a lot to us. You know, and, and I think that it's kind of because our tattooing is a little more underground. I think a little bit like less. You know, like 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 I said, you go to Samoa, the head of state, the prime minister, they love the Sulape family. Like you know, what I mean, like it's a cultural. Like, like I used to say that about my ex-master that, you know, if this was any other, any other art, he would be a living national treasure. Like if he did anything else, but that one thing in Japan, no way. So, you know, I think like, but that's, uh, that's how the Hori titles work in, Japan, in Jap Japanese culture. Thank you guys. So we're winding down and we're getting the last bit of questions. Um, David did ask, um, Taki, I think you talked a little bit about this, if I'm not incorrect. Uh, can you please explain more about the artist stamp? on large scale back pieces. Oh yeah, so that's like the title I just talked about. Like, and that tradition comes from like, if you look at a woodblock print, there's usually like the carver, the printer and the artist all sign it. So when we do um, like for, and, and I think everyone has their different rules, but for me, I won't <laughs> sign anything smaller than either a full back or full front. Like if you get your sleeve done, like I'm not gonna put my, my, my rectangle on there. Like, um, but that basically, yeah, whenever we do like a full back, that's it's kind of like customary. Um, I'll generally like mention it to a client, you know, mm -hmm. just because I know culturally some people might not want someone else's name on them. But I've actually never had anyone refuse it. I mean, it's actually on the contrary, like people really want it there. And sometimes I get you're in those weird positions where somebody has something started by someone else or maybe you're covering something and then you're like, I don't know if I should use it here. <laughs> But I think at the end of the day, like, you know, like, like we have a saying that like, you know, the, the, the worst tattoo is the one that your client doesn't like. Mm -hmm. and, and it's always a reminder of us to like, you know, you just remember, like, you're not necessarily an artist, you're doing this for somebody. So mm -hmm. always keep in mind, like what their opinions are going to be. So I think like, you know, there's, I, I think we do use a certain measure of, um, you know, discretion. But mm -hmm. um, for me, like, it, it's more of a, a thing, like a time thing, like you can't just come and get that tattooed, you, you have to like earn it you know, mm -hmm. on a back piece, which is going to take anywhere from 30 plus hours. So, and, you know, I, I think it's like a, I definitely like for me, there's a, 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 a certain amount of skin coverage that will dictate whether I use that or not. Nice. Thank you guys for answering that. Um, our last question, I think this is a good one to end on. Um, we have a few budding um, artists, tattoo artists in the audience and just um, tattoo enthusiasts um, that like you really love and enjoy their culture. Uh, Ian asks, where do you see younger generations taking tattooing into the future? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 that's a really interesting question. You know, we're kind of going through this, this period of change in, uh, in the whole industry. You know, uh, I, I think from, 
you know, when I first opened my shop, I made sure I went around and talked to every shop around here. And uh, the community was a lot smaller. Apprenticeships were a bit different. Um, the younger, the next generation, you know, I mean, man, you know, just uh, a tattoo is such a big world. Uh, so I'll speak just from the next generation of two full us. Um, I, I was, you know, I kind of think we're going to be working the same way for a while. <laughs> um, you, yeah, the, the next generation of artists, it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I'd, I'd like to see where they go. I, I hope that they stay connected. Um, we have this foundation for uh, indigenous styles of tattooing. There's so many ways you can tattoo. Uh, you tattoo with a machine, um, you know, you then you, you know, you can try to do something else, you can pay homage to one of the original ways, uh, whether it be Tabori or or Tatao or you know, um and I, I would you know, I would hope I, to to be able to see them like be connected, like to keep our, our community of tattooists, uh Taki's he's a Puritan, you know, he's 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 one of these ones that I've always, you know, looked at as being all about tattooing it's you know and, and whether you know you can't shape it to fit you you know it's it, it's it's it, what it is and um so, you know i don't know where they're gonna go if they keep using this numbing cream you know <laughs> it's just uh you know i i would like to see them stay connected and not drift off to kind of you know fantasizing about what they want to do artistically on a person rather than you know uh, you know, being able to to do this service and give people the tattoos they want, uh, being able to have their own artistic implementation. That's, you know, the evolution of the art is, is always amazing and, it, and it's fun to see it. Uh, I, I think, you know, with a lot of these color tattoo artists, it's been amazing to see how well they've been able to create tattoos that last longer, you know? And, and so with... The traditional ways of tattooing, these tattoos are forever. They, um, you know, your tattoo, it looks better as it gets older, you know, it just, um, it ages well. And so I, I, I would, you know, I, I'd like to see the the next generation, you know, have this fascination with with the origins and, and the complete history. I think that's one of the things that I'm impressed with Taki is about his history of the, uh, of, of us as craftsmen in its entirety, you know, whether in, in whatever genre it be, because everybody has their, their significance and their place in this, especially this tattoo world. So, uh, but, you know, for us, I think, you know, that's one of the common things that Taki and I have in common is our connection with culture and our connection with this this original style of tattooing. And so I, I, I would like to hope to see that the younger generation has, this, you know, this, this drive for it, this drive to know the history and, and to touch it. You know, you can't just say hi to somebody on Facebook. You know, if you really admire that person, you go see them at a show, go into their shop. Well, you know, even if you just drop by and say hello, you might be annoyed, but at least you stop by. You know, and, and it's probably hard to get on Taki's book, but, I, you know, as an artist, get tattooed by him. You know, so, yeah. That's it. I think, yeah, no, that's uh, Yeah, I, I agree with everything C said. And I think for me, um, I'd like to start off by, I remember reading a quote from, I believe it was sometime in the 70s, and it, it was a, in a letter from a tattooer to another tattooer who said, these young newcomers are ruining this industry. And they were talking about Don Ed Hardy, who, you know, was a personal mentor of mine, still is, but I think single-handedly changed the face of tattooing, you know? Um, like, he really, I, I feel that he truly introduced Japanese tattooing to the United States in a, in a proper way. Like, and same thing, like, you know, C's a you know, Master Alivaya, he's the one that took him to the conventions in the first place. Like, so he did so much to really just try to showcase as much of the world to, you know, of tattooing. And I think he pushed it forward so much. Maybe some ways it went too far, but that wasn't his fault. It's just the, the nature of things. I think, um, I think like a lot of times, like, especially in this day and age, there's such this desire to like control everything. And like, you know, like with social media, everyone has an opinion and that's fine. Like, you know, your opinion is valid, but at the same time, like, Everyone has one. Like, you're not, like, find what's right for you. Like, I think we were actually really, we kind of had this funny moment with our apprentice because, you know, if you're if you're involved in tattooing or if you're, those of you watching that are aspiring tattooers, like, you'll see that a lot of people now, 
not only aren't using hand tools, but they've, you know, they're not using coil machines. They're using wands with cartridges. Like you're not making needles anymore. And, and we kind of had this debate in our shop, like, should we teach our apprentice to make needles? Is it a waste of time at this point? And it was funny because he came to us like, no, I want to know. Like, I want to start out with the old school stuff. Like, and we're all like, you know, all of us, like, we're like proud parents over here. You know what I mean? Like, like go, Birdo, go, you know? So I think like, and for every kid that's going to not want to study, that's going to not want to like do the ritual, the pain, there's going to be someone that does. And, and I feel it's the same way. Like there's, there are going to be people that want to seek out that experience that want to do that. And like, and I think there's room for it all. Like I get asked a lot, like how I think about certain types, like this, this new type of tattoo or that new type of tattoo or this. And it's like, like I said, if it makes the person happy, I'll, I'm all for it. Like, I, you know, I don't have to wear it. I don't have to look at it. But I think like, you know, maybe that's part of it. It's like, I, I feel, you know, especially like with the last two years we've had, you know, like it, everything's been pretty crazy. And I think I've done a lot of introspection and I look at more like I'm trying to be happy with what I do and what I do for my clients and what I do in my life. Um, I'm trying not to like be as judgmental about everything else. And I think people like myself and see like if we want to change something or influence something, then we should just try to do a good job at what we feel is right. You know, and like I said, with C, like, I feel like I watched him go from like, you know, and I, you know, I mean this in the, the best possible way with like, you know, like party tattoo guy to like this, like master tattoo chief, you know, and it's been beautiful. And I think like that, that's kind of like that transformation we're all going for, you know, and I think like we're trying to leave something with lasting impact, you know, and no one's to say we can't have a good time along the way. I mean, we're still tattooers, you know, so, but, you know, like, I think that's really like, I, I think I'm just trying to focus on what like put forth good. And I think that's just a larger philosophy of life because you can't control everything out there. Only what you do. That's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And that's, that's all the questions we have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been wonderful. And just, I think a great way to end our tattoo series. So thank you so much, C and Taki for joining us today and for being such wonderful um, presenters and sharing your knowledge and expertise with us. And yeah, give the people what they want. They apparently want more C and talkie talks. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate it. It was really, really great to do this. Oh, no, thank you so much. We are so honored that you joined us today. So um, yeah, amazing. thank you everyone in our wonderful Yeah, thank you to our audience for being so um, engaged and insightful. Really loved all your comments and questions. And thank you again, Taki and C. And thank you, Kasha, for being such a wonderful moderator. Um, before we do say goodbye for the day, I'd like to please ask that you fill out a short audience survey. I'll post the link in the chat. It'll really help us out. So thank you in advance for filling that out. It will also be sent to you in a follow-up email. So again, please fill that out if you can. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you have enjoyed Samoan Tatao and Japanese Irizumi, a discussion on tattoo culture. Please look for information about our other virtual programs in our weekly virtual programs e-newsletter and on the virtual programming page of our library website, lacountylibrary.org. For the latest library news and events, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at LA County Library. Please stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful holidays. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Malo Zulape. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Taki. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Kasha. Bye, everyone.